The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Talk about this main event, fellas. UFC featherweight division. We had Ilya Tapiria defeating Max Holloway. K.O. Me and Amir both had Ilya Tapiria and Steve had Max Holloway. So this was this was a competitive one. Uh, round one, Max tried to stay on the outside, but Tapiria started pressing forward. Got the pre takedown, but did nothing with it. And then Max got back up on his feet and found the range and was popping that jab for the rest of the round. So that was pretty much the story of the fight until the end. It was power versus volume. And uh, towards the end of that first round, uh, it looks like they got tangled up and Max fell down, but it wasn't a knockdown. And uh, it ended up on the ground to finish. And then round two was a hard one to judge. Each guy had their moments, and Tapiria started fast. But Max settled in towards the end of the round and, you know, was kind of sticking and moving again. And Round three, Tapiria finally started kind of figuring out that puzzle and was able to hurt Max with that right hand. And then a little bit later, he dropped him with that left hook and closed the show and got him out there to bring the first to finish Max Holloway in the fight by knockout. Way back in the day, Dustin Poirier uh, submitted him. But yeah, the your defending champion, Ilya Tapiria, was able to hold on to that belt. What were your thoughts on this one, Amir? Oh, uh, this is a fun fight, of course. I mean, anything with these two guys is going to be fun. But um, I liked it because even though Taporia got takedowns in the first, I, I still scored the first for Max Holloway. I think he landed the more damage and bigger shots. Um, Taporia didn't really do nothing with the takedown. But after that, it was kind of, you know, the, the power was winning the battle over the volume. Um, and you could see it just kind of catching on Max and, you know, it, it was sad kind of seeing the the fable and folklore of Max Holloway go down. You know, it, the guy's never been knocked out like that. Always a gamer, wanted to stand and trade and everything. So overall, fun fight. Sad to see Max go, but Tapori is a problem, man. Um, dangerous, super dangerous on the ground, but just showed t- this weekend that he can do it standing up. And I mean, he's just as good on his feet as he is on the ground. So I see him being up there for a long time. Steve, I guess I haven't seen enough of him until Saturday to you know stamp him. I guess dude is a problem. Um, I remember they think they said second round they counted. He Max Holloway threw over two hundred strikes, which is that's amazing uh, for in the second round. And I think his goal was to just keep volume, volume until you can find your, um, you know, find your shot, which uh, mm-hmm. never came. Um, I mean, sure, it was striking like it. And then um, he got caught with a third. He got caught with that right hand. They, I think if he would have never got caught in days, you know what I'm saying, I don't think he would have got uh, knocked out one flushed like he did. Um, because he did get hurt right before the finishing shot. Um, that's what got him. I think that's what he was planning on, but it just shows that to Peria. Um, if Max Holloway didn't know, or in, and if he did, he probably knew he had to watch out for the power, which obviously he figured out that day. Um, you know, it, it, it ain't no fluke. He's done it many times, and, and if you're going to do it to Max Holloway, so-called – being promoted to self-proclaimed uh, best best boxer uh, in, in the UFC, not even just featherweight. Um, I, I mean, he did an amazing job of capitalizing off the promotion. Yeah, for sure. So, as I alluded to earlier, uh, what's even next for Tapuria uh, at this division? I mean... Got Volkanovski out of there. Volkanovski was on that historic stretch as far as featherweight goes. Got Holloway out there. Holloway just beat what top two person in the lightweight division, knocked him out. Seems like the sky's the limit for Tapiria. I don't know where we even go with him 
next MR? I am 99% sure that they're going to do Diego Lopez against Deporia. Um, Lopez is on that, you know, fast track to the title, big trajectory, a lot of wins. Um, I believe he was uh, on standby in case something happened with this fight. Um, so they were going to already throw him in there in case anything happened to Max or Teporia. So uh, that's definitely what they're going to go with. I think Diego Lopez makes perfect sense. He's, you know, number three, hasn't faced Teporia. Uh, it'd be a fun fight. I mean, Lopez is good on the ground and good on the feet too. So I think it's a, it's the fight to make. That would definitely be the most intriguing one to make next. But what are your thoughts? What what's next with Tapiria? Um, Steve. I can agree. I can agree with that. Um, I know Volkanovsky came out um, you know, and uh, after the post fight um and got up there trying to challenge him. But I, I honestly don't want to see a Volkanovsky just based off the way um Tuperia came in there and finished him. You know, it wasn't a decision loss. Um, I would rather see the Lopez. Um, I guess it maybe it would matter if who has um, more popularity. Um, but as I'm seeing, man, he's um, I, I can't. I would say Lopez is the best decision because I. I don't want to see a Volkanovski, although he's still up there ranked high. I think it's time to give Lopez a chance, just on based on the fact the way he finished Volkanovski in, what was it, the first round? I can't even remember off the top of my head, but I want to say this pretty quickly where mm-hmm. Volkanovski got finished. But, yeah, I mean, Lopez is like only – fresh pick that you could really go with at the featherweight division. You got Allen and you got uh Evil Lev, but they're 30 that as far as like being in like a mainstream spotlight, like they haven't gotten that chance yet. But you got a lot of old faces that are in the featherweight division. You got Volkanovsky, you got Holloway, Ragger Rodriguez, he's a former challenger. Ortega, former challenger. Josh Emmett, he's old. Aljamain Sterling, he's coming down from Bantamweight up to Featherweight. Calvin Kadar, we saw what Holloway did to him. And then when you go down to 11, then you got the Murphy who just fought. You got Giga Casey. it seems like he's, you know, injured or he doesn't fight as often as you'd like to see him. Bryce Mitch all the way down at 13. So you do the Lopez fight and then really, really, really go from there. Am I? Um, I don't know. By then, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with Volk or Holloway. They might string together a couple wins in that time and end up, you know, running it back or something. Um, Max, you know, lost this fight in kind of devastating fashion, but it's never happened to him before, and he was in it until he wasn't. So I can see them maybe running it back one day. I think Max has that kind of pull with the UFC. Other than that, I mean. There's, you know, Brian Ortega, if he could string some wins together, would maybe be a good one, you know, on the feet uh, from that aspect. But other than that, I don't want to see, I don't know, Murphy, maybe one of these days. Yeah, that'd be way down the road. But speaking of Max Holloway, I mean, after the fight, he said this is not it for him, but he ended, uh, I guess, making. Light lightweight as a permanent place to fight at. How do you think he would fare? You know, if he was just straight up fighting at lightweight, Admire? I don't know, man. I I think that a lot of those guys in lightweight are too big for him. Um, I mean, but that, he's just he's held his own. You know, he he, <laughs> he beat he beat Gaethje. Gaethje's is a perfect example. Um, but you know what happens when he goes against somebody like a Chandler? That's you know really good on the ground, going to take him out. Um, yeah, but Chandler doesn't really wrestle anymore like that. Yeah, but it's Max Hallway. He ain't going to want to stand there and trade. He's seen what happened before. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I was Max, I would want to do lightweight just because you know 
he's a vet, you know, quit cutting weight, you know, going through all that. Just walk around comfortable, you know, put in your time. Uh, I know a lot of people are clamoring again. You know, he makes it into every show. Uh, everybody's talking about a Conor McGregor rematch for Holloway. Mm. Nah, I'm not going to mention that. What do you... What do you think, Steve? Well, um, as far as a uh, lightweight Max Holloway, yeah. Um. Well, I think he still has the aura from his last lightweight fight to where we, where we left off with Poirier before the Gaethje. Oh man, he he got destroyed by Poirier last time. What is he going to do? And what did he do? He surprised us with the Gaethje knockout. So I think he has the or is still on him that he can be respected at lightweight. But me looking at it, I think one of those people at lightweight can, you know, easily dominate him. I don't know who off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure he'll run into somebody. Um, I think it boils down to the style. We'll make the fight to see if he wins or not. If he fights a good wrestler at lightweight, I think he, they may be able to get a takedown on him. So, so t- yeah, it, 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 going to your point, Steve, it all depends on, I guess, matchups. But going back to what you said, Adam, uh, who was clamoring for him to rematch McGregor? I, I've seen it in a lot of comments, and, uh, you know, I've seen it on Reddit, things like that. I mean, it, the Max fans want Max to get that win back. You know, Max Hall is a completely different fighter now. The the McGregor fans just want to see McGregor back and, you know, think that's somebody he would have a chance with that would stand and trade with him instead of using the wrestling. So, I mean, um, you know, I don't really put much stock in McGregor fighting again, so I'm not going to worry about that one. But I did see a fun fact. Um, everybody who has won the BMF belt, Combined went on to be zero and six. Hmm. Uh, I Masvidal, saw like Masvidal lost, Gaethje lost, now Holloway lost. I guess it's a curse. I saw. Also, I saw a false one. I don't know if you sent it to me, but it was like everyone that won the BMFL got knocked out the next fight. It wasn't quite true because uh, Masvidal. Lost by decision to Usman in his next fight. And then he got knocked out by Usman in the fight after that. So it's kind of yeah. true. It was kind of true. But hey, I guess it's a curse having that if you believe in superstitions and whatnot. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in McGregor and Holloway. I think both of them are on different trajectories. Uh, I don't even know how much of a trajectory McGregor is because he doesn't fight. But, um, I think Max Holloway would be in it with anybody that he faces at lightweight after that showing I saw him against uh, Justin Gaethje, except for the champion, which is, I think, why Max is still doing it because he wants to be champion somewhere. I don't think it'll turn well against uh, Islam Makachev. <laughs> so he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And I don't know. I don't know how much weight he could cut. Aldo did it, got down the band away. I don't know if Holloway could do it. He might just be a little bit too big to cut down there. But like we said, we didn't think – we thought Holloway would – not Holloway, uh, uh, Jose Aldo. I might have said Holloway earlier. Jose Aldo was able to cut down the band to weight. Nobody thought he could do it. Holloway's a thin person, so if he wanted to chase a belt <laughs> – I think he'd have better chances of doing that if he's able to cut the weight. Because Aldo, I feel like Aldo has a little bit more muscle mass than the Max Holloway too. Even Max yeah. is a naturally thin guy, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you look at you look at the champion with Morab Dallas Philly, like you know he's gonna go for a takedown, <laughs> trying to take Max down as well. So I don't know. It just might just be bad timing for Max Holloway to. Get a belt back is just, I mean, he still go down in history as one of the best champions down there at Featherway. Uh, just maybe just put some fun fights at this point. 
I, I dude, I hope he does the fun fights. Like I, I'd like to see Max against you know against some of those dream matchups. You know, put him against Sean O'Malley. You know, I think that would be a good fight. That'd be fun to watch. Um, you know, but you know he's earned his his you know rank and the right to call the shots. Definitely, and either way, he's gonna go into the Hall of Fame. So, uh, and he and he's never been knocked out before, so it's not like he's not like in a Chuck Liddell situation where he just keeps getting knocked out and it's time for him to retire. I think he's thirty two, maybe thirty three. So he's kind of like at the stage where it's you know people have two chapters of their career, and he's definitely in that second half and. You know, you see like a Robbie Lawler that's able to have like a second half. Uh, Glover Teixeira, even though both of them won their titles in the second half, but maybe it's just his second half is just fun fight. So we'll see how that shakes out. And circling back around to the Conor McGregor, I don't know the order of events of this happening because it's hard to get inside this guy's brain and what he's thinking. But he he hinted at retiring or announced his retirement this weekend. But I also saw that he challenged Tapiria to a fight as well. So I don't know what order happened, whether he challenged him or retired. This, this guy is on one, but, you know, can you see that fight happening, McGregor versus Tapiria? That might. Oh, I don't see McGregor coming back, man. Uh, if he were to come back, hypothetically. I would watch it, of course. Um would I mean, that fight happen? Would that fight get made first, or would they try to do, circle back around to Chandler? They, they can't, man. McGregor's been out of it so long that he needs a top ten to fifteen stand-up fighter. Like they're not going to put him anywhere that he's going to get taken down and controlled and all that. They're going to put him somewhere that's his bread and butter. They, you know. They want to get paychecks out of him. It's bad business if they bring him back just to get taken down and submitted easily or punched out. I don't. It, I know, but, but we just we just saw that Tapiria will stand and bang with you, even though he's amazing on the ground. It, it could the fight will probably play out just like it did against Holloway. He'd probably just stand up with him. You don't think that would have how it be played out? It's it's like I mentioned before. I think it's people want to beat McGregor at his own game, so I think he would stand there and trade with him. I think he would knock McGregor out. I think you would see basically what we just saw with Max. Um, if Taporia ever it all feels like McGregor's getting the best of him on the feet, Tapori would take him down. But I think he's going to try to beat him on the feet first. But you can't bring McGregor back and just throw him up there at the top like and just jump everybody. I mean, why not? Dana White shows that if it's all about making a dollar, that's what he's going to do. But it's also featherweight. You're not going to see McGregor cut to featherweight. Yeah, but I'm hearing people were throwing out ideas that it'd be at uh, it'd be like a special attraction fight at lightweight or welterweight if he were to do that. You didn't see that happening. Uh, I mean, they could try. Uh, how 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 tall is Taporia? Um, what, what five nine five eight five seven? He's five, oh, five seven. seven. He was shorter than I thought. So, so I mean, if they're fighting at one seventy, then he's really really undersized. I mean, he has fought at lightweight before, but there's still fifteen pounds between lightweight and welterweight. So for him to jump up a whole. You know, 25 pounds, I think he's going to be undersized um, compared to McGregor because McGregor can put on some thick muscle. Um, we've seen him do it before. So uh, 155 or nothing for me. Catch weight 160. I mean, McGregor's not a huge welterweight. He, like, I've seen him barely make welterweight 160. That, that's actually a good idea. And do a catch weight of 160. I don't know. What, what do you think? You think that'd be a good come back fight for him steve or you see him doing something else before that yeah i can say that would be a good comeback fight uh, the results i would say possibly giving himself a chance to you know probably lose because <laughs> when, when i think about size and then weight classes 
say he's five seven and going up to welterweight or one sixty. And somebody that I know that's about that size and did pretty good in welterweight, but was undersized was Tyron Woodley. He was like five nine and still wasn't, you know, a small he was a as far as height, a smaller welterweight. Uh being five seven welterweight, I think that's gonna be a big problem. Yeah, those two inches matter. Oh yeah. So um uh, I would be very entertained. I would love to fight. Um, and I can see him, you know, taking a fight for the money income and risking his uh, belt. Or I don't even know if they'll even have the belt on the line. But, you know, a fight with McGregor, he might do it for the stakes. Yeah, everybody wants that money fight with McGregor. and. I'll give I'll put the spotlight on Tapiria because I think they will after this Holloway result, they are gonna try to strap the rocket to him and you know, try to do something with him, maybe have a fight over there in Spain. So a rare fight would definitely, you know, fast forward that some and you know, get a faster result of him being more of a household name. But he's got the skill and he's young, what, he's 27 or so. Like the champion is younger than like basically all of the challengers underneath them. So uh, you got a lot of things you could do with him, but I'm curious to see what happens with that. And I'm with Am I don't know if we'll see. I'm done with speculating McGregor fighting. I don't think he'll come back. For some reason, if I if he does come back, this might be a far shot. I think the Diaz fight would be the fight that was on the table, but I don't know. Right, we'll see how that plays out. Thank you for checking out this Haymaker Combat Sports segment. This full episode can be found on the Haymaker Combat Sports YouTube page and in audio form on all major podcast platforms. Until next time, peace.